Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Get Right with Digibyte. My name is Mike. It's a fantastic day on the Digibyte blockchain, and I'm super stoked to be joined today by two OG Digibyte members, DGB and Johnny Law. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us on Get Right with Digibyte. Glad yeah, to be here, Mike. You. Yeah, really appreciate it, Mike. Great to be with you. Great, great. Well, I know we've got a lot of topics to cover, and uh, we're going to bounce around for, uh, you know, cover all everything. And um, but first, before we get into that, uh, I do. If you guys could uh, just tell us a little bit about yourselves, DGB. I know um, if you can tell us, you know, when you first got involved with cryptocurrency, uh, and then what uh, you know got your attention and in your involvement with Digibyte, and what is it about Digibyte specifically uh, that uh, really piqued your interest? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so got got into crypto in, in 2017. I actually was on Facebook and, and I had a, a friend who had made a post about Litecoin and, you know, going up and making all this money. And I was just like, what, what is this? What is going on? And nothing about blockchain, nothing about crypto. And uh, got on Coinbase, actually. It was the first um, exchange that I used and, and bought Litecoin. And of course, I bought that pretty much at the peak of 2017 and was feeling really great, you know, as that just riding that baby all the way down into the the, the tank there uh, for quite a while. But I made that decision to say, OK, is this actually real technology? Is it going to actually be the future or do I just need to cut my losses? And for me, uh, I felt like there's really merit here and I need to I need to actually research and, and get do a better deep dive on this. So that's what I did. And, uh, and I got into Digibyte quickly after that uh, through my research and then really stayed for the community uh, because it's just a great community um, among those. Mike was one of the first ones that I uh, started following on there. So, yeah. Oh, well, well, thank you for that. I'm glad uh, I had uh, you know, a positive influence on, on, on at least, uh, you know, one person out there. And uh, so, uh, Johnny, tell us, I know you've been around uh, uh, the Digibyte community many years as well. What, uh, what, when did you first get involved with blockchain technology and what is it that drew your attention to Digibyte? <laughs> Yeah, so I, I first heard uh, somewhere around 2010 and started reading and understanding and didn't buy my first Bitcoin until 2012. And uh, 2012 uh, into 2014, if you were around during that time, <clears throat> there was this point at which I decided that uh, no one was ever going to figure it out. And so I decided that I should just leave uh, because what I'm thinking in my head is just all wrong. And, uh, you know, we see how that's turned out. But uh, 2017, I came back, uh, early in 2017. Um, and again, back to Bitcoin, Litecoin, uh, and that led me directly to Digibyte and, uh, all of the things that I loved about Bitcoin, all the things that I loved about Litecoin, I found, uh, within, within Digibyte with some additional improvements. And then of course I found some great people. Uh, I found, uh, I found you up here uh, sometime in 2018 and, and you sometime in 2019. Um, and, you know, just the community of people and just how genuine they are and um, focused on like the core values of why it's important is why it kind of stuck around. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, that's, that's a lot of the same reasons why I, I got involved as well. Uh, yeah, it was the community and just the, the core values surrounding the blockchain and uh, mm -hmm. and of course the technology uh, behind it. It's uh, it, it's quite impressive. Um, but I know you guys are, are working on you know very specific things within the blockchain. Uh, DGB, I know uh, you've put a lot of work into uh, your NFTs, uh, uh, known as Digi Assets, which uh, you know it's a, it's a layer that you can build on Digibyte. You can issue tokens, NFTs. Um, tell us about Galactic Cred. Yeah, I don't know where exactly when to start. So I'll just um, give you a little bit of the, the history on that for me. And so after going through that bear market and just experiencing all that that pain, uh, one evening I actually went to bed and uh, had, had a dream. And it was this story. It was the adventures of DGB. And I'm like, woke up and I'm like, what should, should I do something with this? I don't really know. I was like, you know what? This is actually pretty interesting. So I started writing it down. And, and uh, that was issue number one. I pretty much wrote it in, in about two days of just just piddling around. And uh, my mom was the one that actually really encouraged me to do it as a comic. And so I was like, all right, let's, let's do this then. And, and it took me uh, over a year uh, essentially to, to work on this, to do the artwork. And, and during that time I had uh, met Matthew and he was building out these digi assets uh, version three. 
And uh, it, was take, it took a little bit of time because any good things take time. And uh, with that, I was telling him I'd really love to make my comic and, and distribute it as a digi asset digitally. And he said, we, we can make that happen. And so uh, through that, that collaboration and, and just really a lot of his hard work, we were able to do that. And because I had more time, I was actually able to um, do voiceovers for these as well as sound effects. And so really trying to make it, um, I don't know what you would call it, Johnny probably is a better word for it, but like a graphic novel or story. And so I'm really happy with that. So it, it's, it's been a fun journey. Wow, that's great. Yeah, so so you originally issued a comic on what is known as V1 or V2 of DigiAssets. Is that correct? So I, or, I actually, the, the comic was, was never on there. I did have some, some NFTs as version okay. two digi assets, but we weren't actually able to do uh, the full comic until oh, we had version three. So it's really opened up a lot of opportunities having version three, not only to be able to distribute the comic, uh, but there's just pretty amazing features that have come with that, that, that mm -hmm. Matthew's has built in there, you know, royalties for creators, which is a really good thing when you're, <laughs> when you're a creator of being able to have that. Uh, going forward, as well as just smart contracts. And so if you own issue number one of the Adventures of DGB, which is called Galactic Cred, uh, you actually get airdropped uh, through a smart contract on a Digibyte blockchain, a Digi asset, you get airdropped a cred every month, and that's in perpetuity. And so um, for folks that hold a cred, they're able to log in there on Digi Asset X, uh, go see owner content, and I, you know, just different unique NFTs that somebody can get. And I don't say that just to tout what I'm doing, but more to say, this is some of the capabilities that we have that's built into DigiAsset X into the Digibyte blockchain. And it's, it's actually really cool. Yeah, you know, that's that's one of the great uh, you know use cases I think for this type of technology is the way that it empowers the creator uh, in a way that. Uh, you know, it's never been possible before, you know, a lot of times, a lot of artists, uh, you know, musicians, uh, you know, in the past, they'd simply be taken advantage of uh, mm -hmm. through, you know, middlemen that, uh, you know, they they can provide the exposure and the distribution. But of course, they're going to, you know, take a major cut of that action. And a lot of times the, the actual creators left high and dry, you know, that their idea gets taken and, and it goes off and becomes the next big thing. But other people reap the benefits. But now with this technology where, the creator can control the distribution and they can do the, the airdrops and it, it, it allows all that to come back to them where, you know, where it rightfully belongs. Um, so, well, I'm curious, you know, when, for your comic book, like how did you encode the data? Uh, to, is it just like a fancy PDF with uh, an audio file? Uh, and did you upload to IPFS? So now you're asking for all the all the secrets, Mike. You know. Oh well, no, no, okay, well, no, 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 no. All right. you know, just, uh, no secrets you know, at all. I'm just having a little fun at you. Uh, um, okay. There, so, so there's a couple different routes you can go with Digi Assets and, and what Matthew has built, and uh, IPFS is, is certainly one of those. Um, okay. For for my comic book, the, the way to do that and the way to do that in a way that folks couldn't necessarily like uh, pirate it as easy, let's say. Um, I do use a AWS, so, so Amazon Web Services, to be able to store some of that, that, that information. Um, of course, the actual digi asset is a digi asset on the blockchain. Mm -hmm. And this allows you to basically have access to be able to view that. And so mm -hmm. um, as far as what that product looks like, yes, I mean, it's, it's the full color artwork um, that, I'm, that I'm saving that as uh, ping files. And then okay. ultimately um, doing those audios uh, as MP3s, and so you're able to put both of those together uh, in the back end, and then okay. then you guys see what you have as a finished finished product. Well, that's great, and I'm glad you mentioned the aspect of uh, you know there were steps that were taken to protect the content. You know, we hear mm -hmm. a lot of people say, "Oh, I can just right click, save, and now the NFT is mine," uh, even though you know it's not on the blockchain. But still, if it's something like uh, you know, a book, a comic book, then someone can get the experience without having to pay for it. And so if there's a way that that content can be protected and can only be accessed through holding that digi asset, uh, you know, I think that just adds a layer of value to, uh, you know, the, the whole whole platform, um, as it were. Yeah, um, that, I think that's the, the hope and that, that's the intent. Of course, there's, there's always ways around and people, some people will find those and, and try to take advantage of it. But um, that's where, you know, being able to get airdrop cred every month when you actually hold the number one issue is, is really cool as well. So it's, it kind of incentivizes you again right. to, to continue to hold that. So a lot of cool things you can do. 
Yeah, yeah, totally. And and Johnny heard. Uh, did you do some some work on on Galactic Cred as well? Is that uh, so? I wasn't that... there for Galactic Cred, but for the Collective, which is issue number two. Absolutely, okay. I'm the voice of All In, um, and uh, that was a lot of fun. Uh, I was super excited to to get an opportunity to support this gentleman right here and all of his creativity because the man has a universe uh, in his mind and he's telling a story too. So it's a comic book and it's really cool, but he's also sharing his knowledge about the crypto, you know, universe, so to speak, and what's needed in order for us to, uh, to band together, so to speak, and protect sovereignty. So I love that he's telling a story. That's a really meaningful story uh, in the process of something that's really cool. Yeah. Thanks for that. Thanks for that shout out, Johnny. And I can't give him <laughs> enough props that he was, you know, willing to. Uh, and when I asked him, "Hey, would you would you mind doing the voice on this?" He was like, "Absolutely," you know. And uh, I know it wasn't an easy task, and he did an excellent job, and uh, really just a lot of fun. And and that again is a product of this community that we have in Digibuy. You, I mean, you you mm-hmm. turn one way, and somebody's willing to help, and and another voice in issue number two, the collective that everybody's is going to recognize is, is Script Skynet. He's actually the narrator. Oh, wow. issue number two, and uh, which again is is just really really cool to be able to have this on the Digibyte blockchain. These folks that are ingrained in this uh, community that are staples in the community to now be ingrained and enshrined in the blockchain as well through through this comic uh, world is is pretty cool. Oh, that's that's fantastic. You know, yeah, like you said, uh, the community we're, we're always kind of there for each other, even though we call come from you know different backgrounds and and. You know, there, there's still that that core sense of you know looking out for one another and just helping mm-hmm. each other up because you know for those you know you know sometimes we take it for granted but you know a lot of people don't understand that you know it's just an open source permissionless uh, protocol. There's no ICO. There's no founders reward. It was just it's a 100% proof of work. You you know got to earn every digibyte that exists and um, you know I think that makes it very unique to. Um, you have a protocol like that and a community uh, that, that goes with it. And, um, you know, when we look at all the, the various use cases of the technology, of course, we talk about NFTs with digi assets. Um, you know, I, I know, Johnny, you've recently joined the Digibyte Awareness Team. Uh, can you talk a little bit about, you know, that experience and what led you to to joining the team after being involved with cryptocurrency uh, for, for all these many years? Sure. Yeah, I, I would tell you, uh, for a long time, I was just a cheerleader, right? So I was like, hey, decentralization, hey, no ICO, uh, you know, and I, I'd say all the things, it's faster, it's better, it's got three layers, you know, and, um, but I didn't necessarily support in the way that actually supported development, right, and use case. And so then I started just getting behind the scenes and really understanding who was doing the work and how it was, uh, how it was coming to pass and, who needed support and who just needed a kind word here and again, right, of, of encouragement. Um, and I got to know a lot of folks um, working on different aspects, right, from, um, you know, Yoshi was kind enough to give me a call out, but really Yoshi is the one that uh, shared with me, you know, kind of how the process works many times, right? And and I got involved with Digi Assets with Matt uh, from the beginning, thanks to this gentleman up here. Uh, you know, just testing some things out and understanding how I can give feedback and, and use some of my other experiences uh, on other chains, honestly, to, to help, um, you know, forward, uh, get us moving along. So uh, as far as how I joined the awareness team, uh, I think people were finally just uh, tired of me, like just sending out a tweet like every 10 minutes or something like that and said, let's put him on team Digibyte awareness team or something like that. And uh, that's how it happened. Oh, that's great. You know, obviously, uh, you know, the Digibyte Awareness Team, it's, uh, you know, a collection of uh, volunteers dedicated to the promotion and, and advancement of Digibyte, uh, you know, mm-hmm. co- you know, collaborating their, their talent and their time and skills. And, um, you know, it's great to, um, you know, when, when community members can uh, get together and, and pull on each other's strengths. Uh, you know, because, for example, you know, my own experience, uh, you know, a lot of times you're just kind of doing things on your own because that's just the way decentralization works. Uh, but it can be challenging because, uh, you know, because you got to just worry about every single detail. And when, you know, I, I think, um, you know, Laura Taylor, I know both of you guys are probably familiar with her. Yeah. She uh, 
she often has, says the phrase that uh, many hands make light work, I think, something along those lines. But, uh, but it's true because oh, oh, when you have many people uh, contributing, uh, it just, you know, it, it's like, you know, like a team of horses, right? One horse can only pull so much, but if you put 20 together, then it's a force multiplier. Uh, and I think that's one thing that's going to, you know, guarantee the longevity of a, of a protocol like, like Digibyte. Uh, so if we could shift gears just a little bit, uh, I know a lot of the work you've been doing, Johnny, uh, behind the scenes is, uh, you know, taking a look at wallets and exchanges and the movement of, of actual the Digibyte coin. Because I've said for the longest time that there's zero dial in my mind that the price is being suppressed. But I've always been quick to follow up that statement by saying I have zero proof that that is happening. But you, however, you do have proof of, uh, you know, maybe suppression isn't the right word, but we'll just call them irregularities. Uh, can, can I think tell that's us a more? good word. Okay. Uh, well, if you can, just spend a little time and explain to us what you're looking for and what you found and what you think it means. Yeah. So for me, uh, I sensed that there was a problem and I didn't know... Um, Based on our utility, uh, the capacity to grow and develop, um, everything that can be done on chain, it seemed to me that there was a disconnect between uh, price and value, so to speak. And I couldn't define it for a really long time. But one of the things I love about um, about the blockchain is it's transparent. It's open. Um, it's, it's intended to be that way. Satoshi created this so that it was a trustless system so that we could see all the transactions so that we could understand how the coins were moving, right? That we didn't need somebody to tell us uh, what was happening. We could look and see what's happening. So with that in mind, I just started looking at the movement of the coins and understanding where the wallets uh, or where the addresses were moving coins from and to and when. And uh, there's not a lot of tools to do so. So that's a lot of manual uh, labor, so to speak hours of clicking a button uh, and going, where did that, where did those coins go? And um, so, so you're just on a, on the block explorer and just click on the links to of all the transactions. And that's how I started for and, sure. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So chain Z is my friend. Uh, chain Z is my favorite uh, little tool to play with um, to look through all the different addresses. And then I started going back to understand uh, what addresses were what. So identifying hot wallets for different exchanges, identifying cold wallets for different exchanges, uh, which literally I did by just kind of comparing uh, when those wallets came online, the average volume process through those wallets, uh, and then lining that up with what I know about uh, the history of those different exchanges. So I was able to match up uh, probably six different uh, hot wallets to different exchanges. And to be able to track uh, and see how you know they were doing business, so to speak, um, it led to you know uh, some interesting sort of observations for sure. Um, but Such it, as like what, I, what, well, like I mean, just I mean, we're all if you're just speculating here, of course, right? Because but yeah. what 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 things have you have you found that you think uh, are occurring? Yeah, so you know, I, I post uh, some of the information regarding uh, the volume and price that's reported through Coin Market Cap and Coin Gecko, right? And uh, if you've seen any of of those posts, you'll see that there are up to six different exchanges that report price and volume that aren't necessarily um, well; they just don't show up in the chain analytics, so to speak. And certainly, there's some derivatives at play that wouldn't show up with coins being moved. Uh, but some of them, three in uh, particular, um, I don't know where their hot wallets are because I can't see them. Uh, there's a lot of wallets out there, right? So there's a hundred thousand addresses, uh, plus or minus, you know, a few thousand every day. Um, so I don't know where they're at, but the volume that they're reporting is often in the top five of all volume reported on all exchanges. And I have no idea what their address is, which is rather odd. Um, but in the same regard, they always have uh, equity uh, across those three exchanges that are reporting price and volume. And that's very strange because regardless of whether we're doing uh, a $30 million uh, volume in a, in a 24 hour period or a $300 million volume in a 24 hour period, they have about the same percentage of the market every day, mm. which is highly odd. Um, and they have a tendency to operate together. So they have a tendency to have 
a price point and a volume that is the same, whether it's over the market, under the market, or at the market. Uh, and that's how they're that's how they're um, setting a price that they want. So, so we think that maybe the, the exchanges they're working together to keep the price within a specific range. Did I, not did I not necessarily. No. There's there's okay. something going on. I don't know that it's that exchange that's doing it, or if it's somebody within those exchanges, or whatever the case uh, might be, or if it's just an API interface um, in terms of how that reporting uh, volume and price gets uh, pulled into coin uh, market cap and coin gecko i don't know i've tagged those exchanges many times uh, <laughs> i've not received any response <laughs> yeah um well you know that that's that's very interesting because um you know uh because yeah, I'm, I'm curious how how it affects the price or the exchange's ability to uh to do these uh, operations, you know, usually, for if Mike, usually they're at least 50% of the total volume reported. So if you can imagine uh, how you derive a price, it's going to be uh, weighted by the total volume that's being done, right? So if you're doing at least 50 to 65% of the volume, or at least you're reporting that you are, you can control the price. Hmm. Now, do you think they're able to, uh, do what they do because uh, people that have bought uh, Digibyte coins on the exchange have left those coins on the exchange and the exchanges are able to use those coins to do what they're doing. Do you think that has any effect? That was certainly my initial impression as I started looking for it. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I do believe that's still the case as, uh, as we've seen a couple of um, exchanges uh, start to issue yield uh, for staking your Digibyte on those exchanges, it points to uh, that they are giving liquidity to other exchanges uh, and would like for you to hold your coins on an exchange so that they can lend your coins uh, to another exchange at a, at a higher rate because they themselves know that liquidity is getting a little bit low. Oh, interesting. Now, uh, DGB, I, I know... Uh, about a week or two ago, I saw a tweet that you'd sent out, a little video um, yep. where you, you ran into an, an issue with uh, trying to withdraw your Digibyte from, uh, I believe it was Abra Wallet. Uh, I personally have never used Abra before, but I've always heard good things about them. But uh, do you mind, uh, can you tell us a little bit more about that experience and, and how that issue was was resolved for you? Yeah, Mike, it's, uh, I guess, a little embarrassing for me because, you know, I'm been here since 2017 and I've heard it a million times, you know, get your coins off the exchanges. And, and I, and I knew that, and I practiced that and uh, kind of, as we're talking here about yield um, kind of fell into a little bit of that, that trap for a little while. But um, so what had happened, I had a, a percentage, not a whole lot, but more than I would like to admit uh, on the Abra wallet. And I had used them for a, a two or three years, honestly, and, and never really had an issue. And, and they've been great, you know, and, and the founder, he's, He's very active in the communities and even on Twitter has replied to me personally on things when I've had questions. And so I guess nice. I had this comfort level and uh, Johnny actually had reached out to me and we were talking about doing this campaign. We we're probably talk about here in a little bit. And I was like, you know what, this is a, obviously the perfect time. I need to get everything off of the, the exchange. And so I went to my app on my phone and went to try to do that. And within the app, it said, it's off. It's confirmed. And then I'm looking at the Explorer. I'm looking at my wallet and nothing has moved. And I'm like, this is, this is not good. And it's a very sick feeling that you get. And mm -hmm. uh, so then I started trying, of course you can't call any of these exchanges. I mean, there's no way to communicate with them. It's very difficult. And so you're, you try to do the email thing and you may not even get a response for hours or days. And so I decided, okay, I'm going to take to, to Twitter and uh, in a nice way and tell my story yeah. and kind of follow this, this journey along and reach out to who I need to. And so uh, with that, it was it was the third day of literally reaching out to them every every evening, trying to trying to get a response from from Abra, and I kept getting different responses. Like you know, once it was liquidity, and once it was just a technical glitch, and I'm like, okay, this is this is getting a little scary now because I'm getting different mixed messages. And uh, I reached out to to the the CEO and the founder, and and you know, he's he's like, well, just just contact support. I'm like, yeah, I've been doing that. <laughs> Um, but, but finally I did get through to somebody and, and they, the third day they were able to help me. I will say this cause I think it will benefit somebody, hopefully more than one somebody out there that's may view this in the future. 
when, you know, in that moment, and again, you're kind of frantic. You're a little, even for me, being here a long time, you're like, man, this is real money here. And I, it just seems it's gone. And uh, so I'm on Twitter trying to reach Aber support again, because you can't get a hold of anybody. And I uh, had a, somebody who did a scam, right? It was, it was an Abra support with a one on the end of it and uh, messaged me and, and said, here's a website, you know, if you just send, here's a website, go here, you know, put this in, you'll retrieve it. Of course, I clicked on to look at it and I'm like, of course it wants your keys, your private keys. And I'm going, all right, I know enough. It's not my first rodeo. I'm not falling for this. Yeah. One. But in that moment when you're kind of like a little bit in a panic, you know, I could see where people would fall for that, especially if they're fairly new and just think, well, right. the story, maybe it makes sense. I don't really understand this technology. And so again, just never, ever put your private keys on any website or anywhere because somebody's trying to, to scam you on that. So that's my story. Uh, thankfully, it had a good ending. I was able to get all my coins, which are now safely in, in my control again. So uh, yeah. that, that's the story there, Mike. Well, good. Well, I'm, I'm glad they were able to, to work that out uh, for you. Um, you know, it's uh, yeah, it can be, be scary. Like you said, you're in that moment and you're trying to, you know, of course with Digibyte, you know, it's got 15 second block times. So like you send it, like you're expecting to see it like within seconds and it not doesn't show up. <laughs> yeah. Not three days. Right. Uh, so I'm, I'm glad that APRO was able to, uh, you know, finally get everything resolved. And um, yeah, I'm glad you, you brought the whole issue of, the, of the, the scams because yeah, like you said, like, you know, people in that moment are going to be vulnerable and, and, and even, you know, might, think okay well maybe this is legitimate and if you just you know, if you go out to twitter and you just type out the word support and tweet it out you're going to get all these random you know like pretenders to be abra support or coinbase and again it's like a google doc like go click on this and you're like no 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 but again yeah. you know if someone is new to the space they might not know any better and i think uh, obviously you know informing people and educating people and bring it to their attention so they know to look out for these scams and not to fall for them and uh, maybe that's, uh, I know you mentioned that uh, collaboration that you and Johnny were working on to um, the Not Your Keys, Not Your Digibyte. Uh, you know, maybe you guys can talk a little bit more about, about that and uh, how it got started and where you guys want to take it. Yeah, let Johnny start out because this was, this was his brainchild here, I think. So, no, I, <laughs> I appreciate that, DG. I, you know, when when I first started in in crypto, the, the core the core idea was unbank yourself, right? And I think probably when you'd log on, it would be most uh, influencers or people that were into crypto. That was the message. Um, it and it was not your keys, not your coins, right? And we've seen that change over time, and we've seen these uh, centralized exchanges uh, take the front seat, so to speak, and try to drive this bus. And um, we've seen then people stop saying unbank yourself uh, and it stopped being about individual sovereignty um, and a whole plethora of scams. And whether it's uh, little ICO tokens that disappear or you come into existence and go out into the world like uh, was a squid games uh, last year. That was, that was quite fun. Um, or uh, exchanges themselves uh, start to rug uh, their customers um, because people assumed that they were safe because they had a website and it looked really good. And there was some founders that came on and said, Hey, we're different um, only to be locked out of their account. I mean, we saw it happen uh, with Poloniex uh, not too long ago, right here with Digibyte, where they decided that they were no longer going to support. They gave uh, account holders a specific amount of time. And then they said, oh, we're sorry. Have a nice day. We'll, yeah. just, keep what, your, we'll just keep your Digibyte. Yeah. And it, it didn't seem like it was a very long notice either. I mean, it was maybe, I don't know, 30, 90 days, which, you know, I mean, for someone like us, we're kind of in the space and we we do but you know a lot of people if you you know bought your bag years ago and you're just like yeah i'm not even going to touch it for another five ten years and then you come back you're like what you know it's yeah i mean that's and what recourse do, do do they have you know i mean you can go through you know legal challenges but again you know just the, the headache and expense of going through that um but yeah i mean it, it really just you know those situations really uh underscore the importance of self-custody and and holding your own coins. I mean, I, I was a victim of that myself. Uh, you know, I didn't have much, but I had some some random 
coins on Cryptopia, uh, which was, uh, you know, pretty popular ex exchange back in the day. I think they were based out of New Zealand and uh, they got hacked and the whole site got locked down. And of course, you know, then in, it's in receivership. Whether I ever get anything back from that. Yeah, who knows? Uh, it's a long shot. And and it, again, it wasn't much to begin with, thankfully. But uh, but yeah, I mean, it, it really drove the point home that, you know, these exchanges. Yeah. I mean, you know, anyone can put up a really pretty website, but, you know, even the, the biggest exchanges are susceptible to, to these uh, these occurrences, you know, getting hacked and, and having you know millions worth of coins uh, getting withdrawn and. You know, and then they yeah. get washed and laundered and, you know, who knows where they go. And um, so, yeah, I mean, it's it's and it's, it's scary at first when you're just entering the space because it's it's such a new concept. Uh, you know, people are so familiar with the, the legacy system of banking. Uh, you know, there's an 800 number. You know, there's, you know, you can just physically walk into a building and talk to someone, uh, you know, at least to have your voice heard, you know, whether or not your problem gets resolved or not right. uh, and, and how quickly that takes. And, uh, you know, of course there might be a little fee involved with it. Uh, but, you know, with self custody, you know, it's on the individual. Uh, and of course, you know, there's instances of people, you know, they've lost their keys. So they still, they have the coins technically, but you know, maybe uh, the wallet was on a device that fell in the lake and then they can't find their seed phrase to restore the wallet on their new device. And so I, I think, you know, going forward, it's going to be interesting to see how the industry plays out where you have, you know, organizations that provide the custody. Uh, you, I think you were kind of alluding to that where it was like the shift in a narrative where it was unbank yourself back in the day. And now it seems like it's kind of turned a little bit more towards maybe the legacy system is kind of co-opting or maybe the other way around. It's, it's, it's difficult to see who's really winning that battle in terms of, you know, in the long term, will self custody be the main way that people uh, use this technology? Or, you know, is it going to be a, a different situation where there's always going to be that middleman involved? And, uh, and of course, the government steps in with their regulations and their, uh, you know, rules that, you know, these companies have to have to work by. And so I know you and, and DGB collaborated on some artwork uh, to to promote this uh, this concept of not your not your keys, not your digibyte. And um, I think it's a great idea that you guys put this together because it could really drive the point home, especially to newcomers that come in and they're like, oh, well, I want to learn, uh, you know, what's going on, how this stuff works, and you know, to to have a, a campaign surrounding this concept of the importance of self-custody and how to do it responsibly. Uh, I think it's a, it's a brilliant idea that you guys have put together. Go ahead, John. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, with, with all of that in mind, um, you, you said it, Mike, I said, there's, there's something different coming, right? So as we look at the regulatory environment, you know, I, I foresee the, the idea of having unhosted wallets as being a challenge. Uh, and and some of it is is quite frankly for the protection of of people who don't learn proper self custody techniques, right? And and certainly there is risk involved with uh, taking responsibility of your own your own finances and your own coins. Uh, there's also risk, and this goes back to um, this goes back to Satoshi and why Bitcoin came into being. There's also risk in uh, assuming that centralized entities are going to make the best decisions for us and that we should just follow along. And right. unfortunately, uh, it would seem as though um, that's what uh, a vast majority of people are choosing to do. And it's not turning out so well as we look at inflation and some of that. Go ahead, DGB. I was going to kind of interject because I shared my story of as far as not being able to get my coins off very quickly uh, from the, the Abra app. And what I really felt from that scenario was is because Abra utilizes Bittrex uh, kind of in the back end uh, to host everything and do, do what they do. And so I do think it had some a lot to do with liquidity uh, in that moment uh, for about three days. And so to me, that that's 
again, that's scary whenever you're, you're wanting to get your, your crypto and, and you can't uh, for, for three days and not even able to get a response. So uh, to be able to, I feel like it's, it's a small price to pay, the learning curve to really know how to do self-custody, to do it the right way and to do it a responsibly way. And so uh, to be able to share that message is, is one I want to share. And so I don't know if we want to transition into to kind of the, the artwork or have that discussion at this point, but I'm happy to, to do that if you want to, Mike. Yeah, yeah, totally. Um, yeah, yeah. Tell us all about it. Um, I'll edit in a screenshot of the artwork itself so the audience can see. Oh, cool. Uh, what what you're talking about? So yeah, go for it. Yeah, yeah. So so kind of how that came to be again. Johnny uh, through Twitter had messaged me and and uh, with this with this idea and and I thought man, it's a really great idea. And then he's just like, so uh, you got any ideas for the artwork? And I'm thinking, not really, you know. <laughs> um, I feel like that's been done so much, you know. Not your keys, not your coins. And and then literally, I felt like three minutes later, it, it just kind of hit me. Um, so, uh, what, what I came up with on the artwork and, and I know Mike said, he's going to put it on there for everybody here, um, is essentially, so if you don't hold your keys, that that's, ins- your crypto is essentially being held captive, right? I mean, so you, another way to say that is it's, it's in jail and I really experienced that. And I don't know if it was serendipitous in the moment because we were doing this and I had to go through that, you know, pain to really do this, but, um, <laughs> Uh, that being said, so so that's how this artwork was was birthed, and and so what you'll see is you'll see the the hand right, and it's holding a key, and I will just say that that key is from the the comic book Galactic Cred. So there's my shameless plug, uh, nice. but in the comic book that really does depict a lot of the story that Johnny was talking about for me is 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 private keys and being able to take control of that of your future and of your wealth, and so um, in this artwork that's what it is. So this hand is, is breaking out of gel and it's got it got a hold of his keys. And so taking hold of, of, of the wealth. And so we are distributing this, uh, actually there's a third person involved in this and his name is Renzo. And if you don't follow him on Twitter, you need to, he's, he's a, a young man. He's, he's pretty incredible. Uh, really just a genius with, with all this blockchain and technology and building a lot of really cool things uh, as well. But he's going to help. He has uh, the Digibyte faucet, and you may have the, the handle there, Johnny. I don't remember off the top of my head, but he's going to actually distribute this. So I created a thousand and minted a thousand of these, um, not your keys, not your digibyte, uh, pieces of artwork. And so we're going to distribute that out. And Johnny, you may talk a little bit about the timing of that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Renzo Diaz. Um, and Renzo's down in, in Peru. He's a, he's a really cool guy. He's taught me so much. Um it, my, my favorite part about Renzo is I'll call and, and ask him, hey, can you do this? And he's like, yeah, you don't want to try to do that. Um, and here's why. Right. And then and then he'll he'll come back to me. He's like, I found a different way to do what you were wanting to do. It's a better way. And I'm like, thank you, Renzo. And and uh, he's always coming up with something new. It's just it's just a lot of fun to interact with him. And, and certainly he's a big part of of making this happen. In fact, um, he wrote his his very first smart contract, which you saw on Twitter uh, over this Easter weekend. Um, all you know that was separate from uh, actually using any of the the platform marketplace to actually uh, send an asset out, and that was specifically for this campaign that's going to launch up here uh, sometime this week, most likely Thursday, the twenty first. Might be a little bit later than that, uh, depending on you know uh, how things work out, but. Um, and there's a thousand assets and and worked out a, a smart contract where you'll actually be able to go to the faucet and and get a little bit of digibyte if you need to uh, and you'll send a very small amount of digibyte from a v3 address uh, directly to that contract address and it will send you back one of those limited edition uh, dgb exclusive artwork uh, for not your keys not your digibyte and we're encouraging everyone to really um, wear uh, that as their profile picture for the month of May. Um, whenever you go to that website, uh, which is the digifaucet.org to claim that asset, there's going to be some specific reasons as to why self-custody is important, as well as some resources that you can go read about uh, in terms of how to properly kind of engage uh, the blockchain with self-custody. And then whenever you claim that asset, it's also going to send out uh, a tweet that's going to have a little bit of information uh, regarding self-custody and that you participated in this uh, this challenge, so to speak. Um, we'll see, uh, hopefully, lots of folks uh, talking about self-custody from different angles, whether it's uh, people like yourself, Mike, uh, the awareness team, 
um, also from the Alliance, um, and then some some key members that you probably haven't uh, heard from in a couple of uh, weeks, maybe. We'll jump in there and, and join in in the conversation about self-custody and why it's important for us moving forward. Yeah, well said. Yeah, nice. Yeah, I mean, that, that seems like, like a, a really great way to engage people to to learn about the importance of self-custody. You know, it's more than just let me lecture you about why it's important, but it's like, Hey, here's a, a thing, you know, an NFT, a digi asset, which you can uh, earn, you know, through just, you know, going to that uh, faucet that, that Renzo uh, had put together and, and, and allow people to, you know, obtain that NFT and hold it in their wallet. And then they tweet about it and the word gets out. And, um, and, and this is something that's, you know, beyond the Digibyte community, of course. I mean, this is 100%. the entire crypto community, all blockchains, uh, you know, this is something that that everyone can can get can get behind and and really push and promote. So, uh, yeah, I mean, great job, guys. I mean, this is I, I love what, what you're doing and the artwork uh, and, uh, you know, and providing it, you know, for people to put out, you know, their little badge, your little icon for whatever social media platform whether it's Twitter and, uh, you know, Instagram, anything. You know, it's a, it's a great place to to show it off and let people know what it means and why it's important. So, uh yeah, yeah, my hope is, is uh, it introduces them to some of uh, the other capacities that exist on on the Digibyte blockchain, and some of the developments that have happened in the last, you know, f call it four months, thanks to uh, you know Matt and and the Digi Asset X team, uh, really working through uh, and creating some tremendous uh, utility uh, on chain mm -hmm. with first ever like on chain auctions, uh, which is just you know astounding to me. I was super excited. So much so that I was just clicking. I was like, "Oh, that's a new one. I'm gonna get me one of those," you know. And um, and then I know I reached out to you, Mike, because I was like, "Hey, I lost most of my old assets." Because Mike, if you didn't know, uh, was like the OG creator of assets on on V2, creating probably uh, at least like 40 different ones that I know of. Um, there's a lot, Mike. I've seen them in other people's wallets um, on the uh, Digi Asset Explorer uh, that all, that Renzo also created um, to go yeah. back through and actually see all the different assets and all the different uh, little communities that are that are starting to cre you know create there within the Digi Asset uh, platform. So it's just so much cool stuff going on uh, with Digibyte. So I'm hoping that this campaign, as you said, I mean it transcends. Digibyte, but also hopefully people will get to experience um, some of the things that are going on within Digibyte at the same time. Yeah, I mean, it, it seems like with uh, what Matthew and the DigiAssetX team have been able to accomplish with uh, their upgrades, you know, like you mentioned, I was involved with V2 of DigiAssets and and as, as cool as it was, there were a lot of limitations. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you didn't really have a platform that you could go to and, and do the auctions or do... Um, you know, the airdrops, uh, you know, it was just kind of, you create it and kind of, that was it, you know, but at the same, it was really cool. I really enjoyed doing it. And, and I think just, uh, you know, the, the way you can, you know, create, uh, you know, content that can be content in and of itself, but it can also pr promote other content and you can include links to other things related to that content. It was just this all encompassing, uh, experience for the user, which, uh, you know, goes beyond anything that's really out there now to a point where, you know, obviously like, you know, you know, watching a TV show is very passive. You just sit and you watch and you pay attention to what's going on and either you're entertained or you're not. And if you're not, you just change the channel to something else. But with a digi asset, you know, you can do, you know, all these other amazing things. So, um, yeah, I, I love just the technology itself and where it can lead to. And, you know, guys like yourselves that are building on it and using, uh, you know, discovering use cases, talking to the developers, say, Hey, I want to do this. And they're like, well, how about if you do it this way, it'll be even better. And then, uh, you know, cause you might be able to provide them ideas that maybe they hadn't thought about. And that's just the way that, you know, the community works and grows, uh, you know, within this, this decentralized permissionless network that, that we are all lucky to be a part of. And, um, yeah, so it, it's really just, you know, it's fascinating and it's great that, uh, that's happening. I know it's, it's been kind of a, a long time coming, just trying to, to, you know, there's a lot of kinks that had to get worked out under the hood to, to make it work at the level that, 
uh, it needs to work at. And it sounds like, like they've accomplished that uh, over at Digi Asset X. So uh, kudos to them for, uh, for, you know, just grinding it out and sticking with it and, and, and getting it done. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So one thing I did want to mention too, uh, you know, our audience knows what a, you know, a, a craftsman that DGB is in the virtual space. They might not know that uh, he's actually uh, in the real world as well. Uh, last year, I found uh, in my Twitter timeline, uh, these whiskey glasses popped up and were available for sale. And I jumped right on them. Uh, I think I may have been one of the, the last ones to place the order i mean these things were just beautiful dgb i mean it's let me just hold that up so people can see it. it's got the digibyte logo on it and it comes in a in a, in a box of two the other one has the digi assets logo on it as well and i believe you made some for uh i, I got a box of bitcoin glasses and there's also litecoin and maybe decred and did one decred yeah, Clint yeah westwood got that one so yeah so yeah. tell me like how do you how did you make these this is uh, I'm glad you actually have one to show because I literally, they, they all sold out. I don't even have one. So I didn't oh, you don't have one for myself. yourself? Oh, no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so yeah, this was a limited good. run. It, it's, it, it was. But, it was. I, I haven't made any more. I, and I kind of just get, get on creative kicks and want to do certain ideas. And, and it's just, uh, and then I kind of, I'm done with it, um, uh, which can be a bad thing too. But uh, this one is actually a collaboration, again, with, uh, I mentioned my mom earlier. So she's, another creative individual and uh, just a, a great time opportunity for me to be able to collaborate with her. And so she had helped me on this, this project. And so, yeah, it was a fun yeah. one. So we, of course we, we bought the boxes and the glasses and uh, were able to use our, uh, what we have and uh, here to be able to create the uh, logos on there and, and uh, package it up, ship it out. So I, I was yeah. surprised, honestly, I, I just put one on Twitter, not even really, I just built stuff cause I want to build it. Not even really worried about selling it frankly and uh everybody people jumped on i'm like oh my goodness and so we ended up we had just enough to do like a, a whole nother run of like 10 or 15 and they all sold it was it was pretty pretty awesome though so yeah well yeah you guys did a fantastic job i you know i'm i'm not a not a big big drinker but when i do uh you know i'll, I'll, I'll i'm not on. either really <laughs> but you know it just it, okay I'll, I'll give you this little back backstory on this too and not that you'll really want to know this but the reason for the the whiskey glasses now my wife does like a little whiskey. She she's in the military, you know, so you, you got to understand that. But, um, but for my mom, we we write songs. We do some of that as well. And so we had written a song together called "Hello Whiskey." Uh, it's on YouTube. Anyway, it's kind of an interesting song. And so that's we were like, okay, we're gonna market this and create these glasses. And we ended up actually never really making the "Hello Whiskey" you know logo on the glasses, and they turned it into the Digibyte and Bitcoin. So that's, that's love the, it. Or, it's a happy accident, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah. I mean, because you're, you're pretty handy. Did, did you restore a Bronco like a couple of years ago too? Did, am I remembering that correctly? Better ask my wife that one. It's been uh, a five year, five year journey. So I've got a, uh, a oh. 1969 Ford Bronco and uh, it's out in my shop and I'm um, st still working on it. Uh, still in so progress. It, it's still yeah. in progress, but it's painted, uh, which is oh. a big, big hurdle. And I mean, this was from a rust bucket to all new metal. And so I've kind of had to learn how to weld and, and do all that. So it's been a really fun project and uh, yeah. with my dad on that. So it's, it's a cool nice. thing. So hopefully this year, still yet, I'm going to be able to drive that. So at some point there'll be a video on you on Twitter about this. So. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I've got a, a 66 Mustang just uh, sitting, collecting dust and rust that having, haven't gotten to tarp off it yet. So you're, you're way ahead of the game. Fastback. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. Fastback. Uh, no, it's, uh, it's, or it might be, I, you know, it's under I'm the tarp. Sure. Oh my goodness. It, still. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. I mean, it, but it, it needs a, it needs a lot of TLC and, and, you know, I'm, I'm not even sure where even to begin. Uh, well, when know, it's, Mike, it's, when it's, Digibuy gets to a dollar, you know, that's, <laughs> yeah, that's, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, this has been great, guys. I really appreciate you all coming on and, and talking about, uh, you know, the your your NFTs and the projects you're working on and the, not your keys, not your Digibyte uh, and your experience, you know, tracking wallets for the exchanges. Uh, but before I let you go, um, you know, do you guys have any closing remarks uh, and how can people get in touch with you or follow you uh, and, and keep up with what you're doing? Um, yeah, so you're welcome to, I'm pretty much, uh, on, on Twitter pretty exclusively. I, Johnny did talk me into getting a discord. So, but if you go on Twitter, you can find the, the link to that and hopefully that'll be better in the days ahead. But, uh, you know, at DGB, um, be able to log on there. Uh, my website is, is DGB.com. 
there it links to issue number one, uh, Galactic Cred, as well as issue number two, The Collective. Both of those are, are 24 pages, full color artwork, narrated, voiceover, sound effects, background. Uh, so it's a lot of fun. Uh, I do want to mention, too, because... I've I've taken just a, a little break from from the actual comic building and uh, working my project I'm working on is is called the Ghost Guild and so if you are familiar with my project you know that uh, the villain in this is called Lord Ghost G H O S Ghost Rider and uh, so I've got this Ghost Guild and so there's ten different little characters that I'm creating right now um, kind of minis of versions of him and so forth and so and they are from the Dark Rim region of the Crypto Galaxy. Again, that's in issue number two. <laughs> it's all in my head, Johnny. It's all—it's the only place it exists. Um, so hopefully that will be coming out, and and so that that'll hopefully be kind of like what um, Majestic J has has been able to do. Really cool what he's done, you know, with the Elf Society um, as far as Digi assets. So my Ghost Guild will be along those lines, and, and have a little bit of customization. So uh, hopefully I have that out in the next. You know, it's still going to be a little bit of time, but uh, I don't want to put a date on it. So. Anyway, yeah. that's my that, that's what I've got going on, and uh, always, Johnny, always something next level behind, you know, DGB there. Well, yeah. thank you for that. Well, that's great. Yeah, we're really, really looking forward to that. Uh, Johnny, uh, do you have any uh, any thoughts you'd like to uh, close the episode out with? Uh, no, you know, find me on Twitter. Uh, primarily where where I reside uh, for, for the moment. I would say. Um, you know, we discussed a little bit about why it's important uh, in terms of self custody, and and I think it's a great conversation to have and and practice for certain with small amounts and and make sure you get comfortable with it and understanding it, um, and and reach out. Uh, there's a lot of community members here that can help you, uh, and would be more than happy to do so. So if you're not feeling comfortable with it, reach out to one of us, uh, and we'll try to we'll try to set aside some time to not necessarily tell you what's best, but maybe send you to resources where you can find that information and, and uh, maybe kind of hold your hand a little bit and tell you it's going to be okay a little piece at a time and, and you'll get more comfortable with it. Uh, but I, I would tell you right now, um, from my perspective, people want coins. Um, and what I mean by that is they're willing uh, to do all sorts of interesting things uh, in the marketplace to create fear and emotion in you and I and all of us, quite frankly, to get our coins. Um, and from my perspective, uh, that's what's happening even right now in this moment. Um, people are accumulating coins. That's it. Yeah. All right. Well, guys, thank you so much uh, for joining us on the show with Get Right with Digibyte. I hope uh, both of you will come back again sometime to talk more about uh, you know the latest developments projects you're working on when you know your ghost uh, project uh, gets off the ground dgb and uh yeah thank you again so much and um yeah we'll talk soon yeah thanks for having us mike thanks so much mike okay okay thanks, thank you good to see you john